Hi, 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 hello, hello, my dear students. Welcome, welcome to the world of zoology. Myself, Dr. Sai from Zoology Wala. My dear future medicos, in the previous sessions, I explained human skeletal system. And today, I'm going to explain you about cockroach, Periplaneta americana. That is the scientific name of our cockroach, which belongs to phylum Arthropoda. So before going to explain you about the cockroach, I think cockroach is a, a very favorite animal for most of uh, my future medicals, I think. See, most of you will frighten by seeing the cockroach. But anyhow, uh, cockroach is really dangerous. Why? Because it will transmit number of bacterial diseases also. That is the reason it is not advisable to catch the cockroach uh, with your bare hands. But just before going to begin uh, the cockroach, I want to show you the cockroach. Of course, most of you might have seen the cockroach, but now, say so this is uh, the original cockroach. For the sake of my future medicals, uh, I am just daring to catch this cockroach with the bare hands. Of course, later I will wash, no problem. So this is uh, the cockroach. See the wings. Uh, see the wings. I will explain all the things, but just before going to explain, you see the cockroach, and these are the antennae, two antennae of this cockroach, and the wings. Uh, you can see two wings here, and another two wings are present here. So see, these are the wings, which are very thin actually, and these are somewhat thicker. So wings and of course legs, cockroach comes under hexapoda, isn't it? Means six legs are present, hexa means six, pod means foot, six foot present in uh, the cockroach, okay? And you can see the thoracic region and abdominal region also and of course the head, see this is the head of uh, the cockroach, okay? So I am there with cockroach, I am going to explain you by showing this cockroach whenever uh, uh, I assist it in explanation, okay? I will put it aside. My dear friend, thanks for helping me. Please be here, don't fly, okay? So my dear friends, cockroach, which is a very important chapter in the CBSC point of view, I mean to say in the NEET examination also. So it is there in your plus one syllabus, okay? So in this, I am going to explain you about Periplaneta Americana, which belongs to Phylum Arthropoda. You know, Phylum Arthropoda is the largest phylum in the history of animal kingdom. Arthro, A-R-T-H-R-O. Arthro means a joint. Pad means foot. Foot. Jointed foot. So, arthropods are the animals which comes under jointed foot. Here, three pairs of legs and two pairs of wings, three pairs of legs and two pairs of wings, uh, this is a very important feature of uh, insecta. Of course, phylum arthropoda, cockroach belongs to phylum arthropoda and class insecta, I-N-S-E-C-T-A. Class insecta is the largest class in the history of animal kingdom and phylum arthropoda is the largest phylum in the history of animal kingdom, okay? So our cockroach belongs to phylum Arthropoda. This is the scientific name of cockroach, Peri Planeta. Peri is a surrounding planet. So throughout the planet, uh, these cockroaches are available. Then you may ask me, what is this Americana? Why the name was given? So despite its name, it is not the native of uh, America. Previously, it was found in Africa and Mideast countries. Uh, later, because of uh, the human population and human agricultural practices, uh, these have been introduced into the American regions, okay? And of course, now they are present in the tropical regions and subtropical places also, but mostly they are present in the tropical regions when compared with the remaining regions. So generally, the cockroach color, what is the color of cockroach? Just now, I think you have seen. What is the color? Just I will show you. So this is brown. So the cockroach color is brown or black, brown or black color. Say before I am going to use the next board, say this, Arthropoda, jointed foot, three pairs of legs and two pairs of wings is one of the characteristic feature of arthropods, especially insects. And the largest class is insecta, this is one bit, and the largest phylum is Arthropoda. 
and periplaneta americana this is the scientific name this is genus name and this one as the species name okay so these are very important features let me explain you the color the color of uh, c o l o r you can write the color of the spelling also like this so color is brown or black so brown are black bodied insects generally they are uh, even bright yellow or red or green colors also bright red green yellow these colors are also present especially in the tropical regions something like traffic signals isn't it so yellow uh, red green like that even those colors are also seen in the tropical regions okay and then what about uh, average uh, length of the cockroach in generally minimum 0.6 centimeters to 7.6 centimeters in length that is an average length of uh, our uh, friend cockroach our friend means actually these are not friends of human being like para, like frogs these are enemies as a matter of fact but why i am using the word friend why because it is now this cockroach especially is helping me to explain you that is the reason why i am calling this as my friend okay thank you friend so 0.6 to 7.6 centimeters that is average length of generally cockroach in generally body divisions if you observe the body divisions body is divided into three important parts what are those three important parts body is divided into head thorax abdomen a b d o m e n body is divided into three important parts like head thorax and abdomen these are the three important parts of uh, the cockroach see this now i think it is clearly visible for you this is the second part thoracic region and this one the lengthy portion is abdominal region but head you have to observe the head like this see this head is bent at right angles to the body if you want to see the head head is always like this so cockroach is showing so much respect you know is always uh, the head is directed downwards that is the reason why you can't see the head so clearly from this view from this dorsal view why because cockroach head is bent at right angles to the body i am going to put it on the board say so body is divided into head thorax and abdomen these are the body divisions for example if you take uh, the earthworm annelids where the body is divided into number of segments both externally as well as internally but in case of cockroach body is just uh, showing the divisions externally no internal segmentation but in case of cockroach all the segments are equal externally of course internally that is homonomous segmentation h o m o homo means same all segments are essentially similar that is the reason why in case of earthworm you can use the word homonomous metamerism metamerism division of body i will explain homonomous metamerism but the division of cockroach body parts head into head thorax abdomen these three are unequal in size and of course the shape also so that is the reason see the head is triangular and you can see the thoracic region here and this is the abdominal region head thorax and abdomen these three are unequal that is the reason why this is called heteronomous metamerism this is for your understanding my dear friends it doesn't mean that uh, these are important in the neat aspect it's not like that but very important in the subject point of view homonomous metamerism is seen in earthworm and this is heteronomous metamerism body is divided into unequal segments body is divided into unequal divisions or segments okay head thorax abdomen these are the three body portions which are seen in cockroach generally cockroaches are uh, uh, nocturnal you know nocturnal n o c t u r n a l nocturnal means that we are able to see the cockroach very actively during night time i mean to say cockroach exhibits uh, very active movements during the night time nocturnal animals are the animals which are seen only during night diurnal animals are the animals which are seen only during morning time it's not like that nocturnal animals are the animals which are very active during night time it means they are active even in the morning time also but when compared with the morning time and the night time in presence of light in the absence of light they are more active during night time for example if you take the carnivorous animals predator something like lion tiger of course they are also very good hunters and they can hunt in the morning time also and even snake it can uh, you know it is able to exhibit its capacity its ferocious nature it is able to bite you even in the um, daytime also but they are nocturnal it means they are very active during night time 
and they are able to come out of their hiding place uh, during night time in order to search the food material especially. So nocturnal animals are the animals which are active during night time. So cockroach is a nocturnal animal and it lives in places where the dampness is present in the soil or in the surrounding environments. Dampness is nothing but moist environment. If moistness is present then the cockroaches are able to survive comfortably very happily. Okay? Am I clear? So, this is the general length and these are the general divisions of body and this is the activity of the cockroach nocturnal and it lives in the dampness. Generally, it is able to seen in all places, is not it? In storeroom, in cracks or crevices of uh, the wall or wood uh, or even in uh, kitchen, washroom, no exemption. Cockroach can live in every place, is not it? It is sometimes it is seen in classroom, it is seen in washroom, it is even underneath the beds. Uh, Cockroaches are found everywhere. See the greatness of cockroach, it is able to live in washroom as well as in kitchen room. It is able to transmit the diseases also so easily. Okay? It is able to live in different places of uh, the human inhabitations. Okay? And now let me explain you by taking uh, another slide. Let me explain you. And now as I said, uh, body is divided into three divisions, is not it? And generally as I told you, we are going to talk about peri planeta, peri planeta on an average 34 to 53 mm length. That is the average length of this peri planeta americana especially. So, as I told you body is divided into divisions like head, head is triangle, head is triangle and thorax followed by abdomen. How many segments are present in the head, thorax and abdomen? Generally, six segments are present in the embryonic region and those segments we are going to call them as scleroids, S-C-L-E-R-I-T-S, scleroids are nothing but plates. Six scleroids combine to form only one head segment or one head which is in triangle shape. In the embryonic region, six segments are present, later they fuse to form only one head. Thoracic region, three segments are present in the thorax. Three segments are present in the thorax and abdomen contains ten segments. Actually, in the embryonic region, if you observe, in the embryonic region, just now I told you that head region in the embryonic region contains six, thorax in the embryonic region contains three, abdominal region contains eleven segments in the embryonic condition. But if you observe the adult cockroach, thoracic region as usual three, head six sclerites combined to form only one and uh, abdomen, 11 segments will become 10 segments. The appendages, the vestiges of 11th segment are nothing but anal cerci, some people will pronounce it as anal cerci also, anal cerci which are present in uh, both male and female cockroach. Actually, they are nothing but the vestiges of appendages of 11th segment in the embryonic condition. So, in the embryonic condition, 11 segments are present, my dear friends, later the number of segments will become 10. Okay. So, regarding the number of segments, this is the demarcation, clear? And now, if you observe the segments, imagine this is one segment of body and this is another segment of body and this is another segment of body. So, like that number of segments are present, body is covered by a chitinous skeleton called exoskeleton okay. and that is nothing but cuticle, exocuticle, epicuticle endocuticle, epicuticle is an outermost layer, below the epicuticle exocuticle, below the exocuticle endocuticle will be present. So, cuticle is divided into three parts, but we are going to take only exoskeleton into consideration. Exoskeleton is very hard, very hard plate which covers all the segments of uh, the cockroach. Okay. Imagine this is one segment, this is another segment and here this exoskeleton is absent. See, this is an exoskeletal region which is supposed to be there, but here there is no exoskeleton. Exoskeleton is absent here. Here also exoskeleton is not there. So, exoskeleton is nothing but a layer, a protective layer which is useful for protecting the body, useful for attachment of muscles also. I will tell what are the advantages, but that hard layer is not seen between the segments. So, this is one segment, this is another segment, another segment. So, between the segments, uh, this exocuticle is not seen and that is the reason, that is the reason why if you are able to bend the cockroach, 
say this, if you are able to band the cockroach, say this, I think you can see the segments here, these are the segments. In between the segments, there is a, a thin layer, white color layer, because of having that thin layer, see this, cockroach is able to show the flexibility, see this, flexible, abdominal region is flexible, even thoracic region also flexible, see this, cockroach is bending, see this, see the flexibility, see the flexibility, I mean to say, you are able to bend the cockroach like this. Isn't it? You are able to bend the cockroach. You have to be very cautious, okay? So, do not bend too much like this, then it will damage, isn't it? So, just if you bend the cockroach like this, even though segments are very hard, between the segments uh, there is no exoskeleton. Why the segment is very hard? Why each segment is very hard? Because of having exoskeleton. But between the segments, as this exoskeleton is absent, it shows flexibility. So, the thin layer which is present between the segments is called arthrodial membrane, A R T H R O D I A L, arthrodial M E M B R A N E, okay, B R A N E, arthrodial membrane, D I A L, arthrodial membrane is a membrane where exocuticle is absent and it is seen between the segments, that is the reason why cockroach shows flexibility between segments. Yes, sir, Shin. So, between, just for your understanding, I am saying between segments, between segments of cockroach, flexibility is seen. What is the reason for having that flexibility? Arthrodial membrane, arthrodial membrane is seen and is without, without exocuticle, without exocuticle. That is the reason why cockroach shows flexibility, okay? That is a very important point. And this arthrodial membrane, is also called articular membrane, another name, arthrodial membrane is also called articular membrane, arthrodial membrane is also called articular membrane, a very important features here. So, exocuticle, this is absent, arthrodial membrane is also called articular membrane. You have to remember these statements, very important in the examination point of view. And now, as I told, cockroach body is very hard, is not it? So, dorsally, this is the dorsal side of cockroach, this is the dorsal side of cockroach and this one will become the ventral side of cockroach. Ventral side is always a stomach side for the animal, okay? This is the ventral side and we have stomach here, is not it? So, this is the ventral side in case of human beings and this is the dorsal side in case of human beings. This is dorsal, this is ventral. So, in case of human beings, ventral side, this is ventral side and this is dorsal side. Similarly, for cockroach, the visible side, where the wings are present, that will become the dorsal side, opposite side, that will become the ventral side. Even plates also, even in the, even uh, if you consider the plates, even if you consider uh, the plates, okay. So, dorsally, tergal plates will be there, tergum, dorsally tergal plates, tergum, ventral plate is called sternal plate, sternal plate, dorsal plate is uh, the tergal plate, ventral plate is the sternal plate and lateral plates are called pleura or pleurides, P L E U R I T S. This is the dorsal plate and this is the ventral plate and these two are lateral plates, but cockroach body will be like this, like this, okay. Dorsal tergal, ventral sternal plate and these two are lateral plates are called pleura. So, if you say the plates will be like this, this is dorsal and this is ventral lateral plates. So, take one scissor and cut the cockroach in the vent lateral side like this. If you cut the cockroach laterally, then dorsal plates will separate, ventral plates will separate. So, dorsally and ventrally they are joined laterally by pleura, pleurides, okay. So, one segment is attached to another segment because of having the flexible membrane, arthrodial membrane. So, here arthrodial membrane, arthrodial membrane, arthrodial membrane will be there. Just uh, uh, 
I will represent like this. So, the here arthrodial membrane, arthrodial membrane, arthrodial membrane as a result of which you know flexibility will be there. Cockroach is able to show the movements. Why? Because you know very hard layer is going to entirely cover the cockroach. So, if completely hard layer is there, how the cockroach will show the movement, restricted movements will be there. So, in order to provide some movement, you know that arthrodial membrane or articular membrane is going to helpful for the cockroach. Okay. And now, if you observe the head region, just now I told you that head is a triangular, let me change the color so that uh, it will become more clear. So, if you observe the head, head is a triangle in shape. So, if you want to see the head, say this is uh, the head of cockroach, this is the head of cockroach and uh, these are the two eyes of cockroach, compound eyes. Why these are called compound eyes? I will tell, do not worry, I will explain all this. And now, say this is the head or a triangular uh, part of uh, the body and as just now I told you that head is bent at right angles to the body, is not it? So, this is the head region. So, head region is a triangular, this is triangular. So, you can observe uh, the two long antennae also. So, this is one and this is another one. Two antennae are present which helps in monitoring the environment, which helps in monitoring the environment. So, for that is it. So, this monitoring the environment, this is the, these are the antennae, one antenna. And now, I will show you the antenna. Okay. Now, see the this is uh, uh, the cockroach. If you observe this, just have a look, just have a look over this cockroach. Okay. Hope so, it is visible. And this is the head portion of cockroach. This is the head, and a pair of uh, eyes are present. And this is one long uh, antenna. Two antennae are present. Antenna helps in monitoring the environment for sensing the environment. So it contains receptors. Sensory receptors are present, which helps in monitoring. Filiform. F i l i f o r m. Filiform means thread. Thread-like antennae are present, and each antenna is located in, imagine, imagine my dear friend, this is the head and here there is a socket and this is called membrane socket. Inside the membrane socket, uh, here comes the first part of antenna, this is called scape, this is the first one scape and this is pedicel and this is multi-segmented structure called flagellum. Similarly, here there is a socket, membrane socket over which this is the scape this entire structure is escape and this is pedicel, flagellum like this two antennae are present. So, what is the first part? SCAP scape is the first part and this is a pedicel and this one a multi segmented structure. What is that multi segmented structure? Multi segmented structure is called flagellum. So, that is regarding the antennae. The function is touch, they are able to touch the objects because the cockroaches are able to touch the object because of having, because of having these antennae. Okay. Antennae helps in touching, tango, tango receptors, tango means touch, okay. these are the receptors. And now, if you observe this socket is membranous, a very important aspect in the CBSC point of view, membranous sockets are present. M E M B R A N O U S membranous sockets S C O K E T S membranous sockets over which the antennae are present. Clear? And now this is the thoracic part, this is the second part of the body, thoracic region, and rest of which this is abdominal region. This is abdominal region, and you see the last segment where you can see a notch inside. Okay, notch inside. Epiprox, paraprox, some terminology is also there, not required. So, here this is abdominal region and this is thoracic region and a pair of uh, compound eyes are present. And thoracic region, just now I told you that 
thorax if you observe the thorax which is the second part of the body second part of the body is thorax thorax is also covered by exoskeleton no doubt about it exocuticle is present even in the thoracic region also let us consider the thoracic region after the head region okay so just now if you observe the head and this is the plate and this is one plate and here there will be an another plate and here there will be an another plate so like that and here some structures will be there i will show all these in cbse test book okay so just before going to show you just before going to show you okay i am going to explain i am going to show you the what are the different parts which are present in the thorax i will explain but if you observe the head region head region contains mouth parts what are the mouth parts present in uh, the head region the mouth parts which are present in the head region are biting and uh, c h e w i n g biting and chewing type of mouth parts are the mouth parts present in cockroach so cockroach is able to bite the object and is able to chew the objects also so the biting and chewing type of mouth parts are present in the cockroach not in all insects there are there are different types of mouth parts are present in the different insects some have uh, you know sponging and siphoning type of mouth parts are present something like in house fly so house fly is not going to take or house flies will not take uh, the solid food material they will spit there you know uh, the liquid fraction combines with the solid and then cockroach is able to take uh, or the house flies are able to take semi solid or liquid form food material with the help of sponging and siphoning type of mouth parts they are seen in house fly and butterflies they have siphoning means lapping there are different types of mouth parts are present lapping type of mouth parts are different types of mouth parts siphoning type of mouth parts are present piercing and sucking type of mouth parts which are generally present in female anopheles female culex uh, female edis mosquitoes where piercing and sucking they are able to pierce the uh, object or the human being and they are able to take the blood generally anopheles mosquitoes they will take the blood of warm blooded vertebrates only okay then you have that i will explain later like the different types of mouth parts are present in uh, different animals but in case of cockroach biting and chewing type of mouth parts are present now the point i required what are these biting and chewing type of mouth parts and what are the different segments present in uh, the head of cockroach now i will show okay so i will take this diagram again now i am going to take uh, another diagram for the sake of uh, head region to explain now see the head region of cockroach that's it so this is the head of cockroach okay hope so it is visible and now these are the antennae segmented structure antennae are present in front of eyes this is another important cbse statement you have to remember antennae these are antennae which are present in front of antennae are present in front of eyes in front of eyes so there is this is compound eye and this is small structure present here i think you might have noticed it this is called ocellus o c e l l u s ocellus which is also called simple i ocellus singular also called simple i this is not actually help in formation of uh, vision or image but these are very much essential for any changes in the light intensity detection they are able to detect intensity light intensity changes for example if you close your eye imagine imagine you have closed your eye if anybody just add a torch on your uh, closed eyelid you are able to detect as some light is there we are able to detect as some light is there here like that we are see that particular uh, structure which is ocellus which is called ocellus this is useful useful for receiving intensity of image whether the light is there or not not to see the object in order to see the object the compound eyes are there which are very much essential but to form uh, not to form the image ocellus are not useful for formation of image but compound eyes are essential for receiving of a light of a any external source okay and now see this diagram is very important in the neat point of view why because the diagram oriented questions also may be there and what is this structure called mandible m a n d i b l e this is mandible two mandibles are present in cockroach 
imagine this one is mandible like this mandible this is one mandible or this is mandible and here it is directed anteriorly and this is directed posteriorly so these are this is one mandible like that another mandible will be there two mandibles will be there two mandibles are present the cockroach for the cockroach like this and this is upper lip even for cockroach also upper lip will be there i will explain see this is the upper lip labrum l a b r u m labrum is called the upper lip this is the labrum labrum is called upper lip even for human beings see this is upper lip and this is the upper lip of uh, the cockroach and mandible just behind them mandibles see two mandibles are present the mandibles will move in opposite direction like this isn't it a mandible should move in opposite direction if the mandibles move in same direction how the food material will cut so deeply so mandibles will move in opposite direction like this okay because of muscles adductor and abductor muscles are present not required so mandibles and here you can see the labium l a b i u m labium is uh, the lower lip labium is the lower lip and this is maxilla you can see the maxilla here see the pulp see this one 1 2 3 4 5 five segmented structure pulp that is maxilla so one maxilla present here one maxilla present here see now just to have some idea upper lip and lower lip just behind them a pair of mandibles are present mandibles on either side here gene g e n a gina they are nothing but cheek cheek sclerites i told you that head region is formed by six sclerites so the gene are nothing but cheek these are cheeks cheek sclerites in front of them you can see all these structures all the mouth parts are present they are enclosed in the oral cavity see this one upper lip and this is lower lip one upper lip one lower lip is present and uh, internally a pair of mandibles are present and from here one maxilla from here one maxilla so this is uh, the maxillary pulp five segmented structure and this is five segmented structure maxillary pulp so the lower lip from the lower lip three segmented pulp will come 1 2 3 1 2 3 so three segmented pulp from this side three segmented pulp from this side similarly five segmented pulp maxillary pulp and this is a five five segmented one maxillary pulp so two maxilla are present and this is labium which shows uh, three here three here these three this is three this is three these are called labial pulp labium is nothing but the lower lip three here three here that is labial pulp and these structures will become maxillary pulp i will show you in one diagram but before going to show the mouth parts i will show the mouth parts but the point what i want to convey here you have to remember the head is triangular in shape number 1 and then now are present in front of eyes this is the second point you have to remember and this is the mandible and this one is labrum after that just see here maxilla lower portion is labium in the examination it is very important you have to remember the labeling my dear friends you have to remember the labeling and now i am going to show you the the mouth parts i am going to show you the mouth parts see here now you can see the mouth parts these are the mouth parts of cockroach along with the head hope so it is clearly visible now now see this is the labrum which is considered as an upper lip just now i explained labrum is uh, uh, the upper lip okay let me change the color so that uh, you can see a bit clearly so this one is uh, the labrum this is uh, the labrum upper lip okay i will do one thing and this one is uh, labium l a b i u m labium is uh, the lower lip hope so it is visible there am i right or else i will drag the diagram to one side what is there okay mm, yes it is better now let me take the pen say this one so this is labrum upper lip okay and this one is labium l a b i u m lower lip see three segmented pulp just now i told this is one this is two and this is three similarly one two three so three segmented pulp actually three segmented pulp is present like this and this is upper lip okay and these are the mandibles these are the mandibles one mandible here one mandible here two mandibles are present here 
very important in the examination point of view incisizing region grinding region for example if uh, there i have to write say this one imagine this is uh, the mandible imagine this is mandible and uh, here comes the teeth like this and this portion will comes under incisizing i n c i s i n g incisizing means cutting and this portion will become grinding g r i n d i n g this portion will become grinding incisizing cutting grinding chewing incisizing region these may be asked in the examination point of view very important incisizing and grinding region and uh, followed by the mandible here also incisizing and grinding region two mandibles will be there and this is the maxillary pulp just now i explained you isn't it one this is one and this is two three and four five five segmented pulp will be there one two three four and this one is five so five segmented pulp this is the maxillary pulp this is maxillary pulp maxilla isn't it maxillae plural how many maxillae are present two maxillae are present okay and this is labium which is considered as lower lip how many lower lips are present only one how many upper lips are present one how many mandibles are present two two mandibles how many labia one how many maxillae two so these are asked in the examination which of the following are paid structures which of the following are unpaid structures like that they will be asked in the examination you have to remember my dear friends okay and who is this gentleman present in the middle something like the tongue of human being hypopharynx h y p o p h a r y n x which is also a chitinized structure see this one like this so this is present in the central part oral cavity and here the mouth parts are present upper lip lower lip so for the sake of our convenience i have represented in the diagramination like this in the diagram like this see this one upper lip lower lip and mouth parts so biting and chewing type of uh, mouth parts are the mouth parts see see this is the diagram just now we have seen examination in the examination diagram oriented questions may be there you have to remember repeatedly i am saying that's all about uh, the head portion and just now i told head is always bent at right angles to the body that is the reason why it is called hypognathous head h y b a g n a t h o u s hypognathous head hypognathous hypo means below gnathe means jaws jaws are always directed downwards jaws directed downwards always seeing uh, the bottom that is the reason why the cockroach head is called hypognathous head hope so it is very clear and now let me move into the next portion first of all let me raise this clear and now if you observe the thoracic region what are the parts of uh, the thoracic region say so imagine this is the first part of thorax and this is the second part of thorax and this is the third part of thorax so thoracic region this thorax is called pro prothorax and this is called meso meso this is meso thorax and this one is meta meta this is meta thorax prothorax meso thorax meta thorax like that three thoracic parts are there thorax is divided into three segments just now i told you that say this one this is the thorax see prothorax the plate what you are seeing here hope so it is visible the plate what you are seeing here this is the thorax the first part of thorax prothorax this is the largest plate and prothorax or mesothorax and metathorax of course all these are covered by cuticle exocuticle will be there so the cuticleized structure present over this prothorax everything comes under pronotum pronotum is nothing but the cuticleized structure okay similarly mesothorax is covered by meso notum metathorax is covered by meta notum meta notum meso notum meta notum pro notum so pro notum is nothing but the plate which covers the prothorax mesothorax is covered by meso notum metathorax is covered by meta notum so prothorax is uh, the largest sclerite over uh, the thoracic region and as a matter of fact if you consider all the individual segments of body prothorax is the largest plate of the body also okay and for prothorax there will be one leg here 
for prothorax one leg, mesothorax one leg, metathorax one leg. Similarly, on the other side also. So, prothorax contains one leg, mesothorax one leg, metathorax contains another leg. Total three pairs of legs are present. That is the reason why cockroach comes under hexapoda. So, this is just a diagrammatic representation. I will draw one leg here. I will show the leg also. So, this is uh, this is the cockroach. See, I brought one nymph also. The nymph is moving. <laughs> okay. So, this one and these are the legs of the cockroach. So, these are the leg. So, this is the leg, leg of cockroach. Okay. Please do not curse me. Just if I already dead. I too do not want to handle it in a wrong way, but you know this is also causing a lot of damage to human beings also. So, you can handle it no problem. Okay. So, this is uh, the leg of cockroach. I can remove the leg and I can show you to you. I can show it to you, but some of you may curse me. See, this person is pulling the leg of the even dead animal also. How can you pull like that? So, that is the reason just I am not pulling the leg. This is the leg of cockroach. Okay. Okay. Now, already I found one. Uh, broken leg there, I will see. Anyhow, let me show you the leg of uh, the cockroach. This is uh, the first part of uh, leg. This is the first part of leg called coxa and this is trochanter and this one is called femur and this one is called tibia. One, two, three, four, five, tarsus. So, this is the first part of leg called coxa. This is the second one called T R O C H A N T R trochanter. And this one is called femur, F E M U R. And this one is tibia, T I B I A, tibia. And these are tarsus, T A R S U S. Tarsus contains 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 tarsomeres, T A R S O M E R E S tarsomeres. See, these, the, these wordings are similar to the human being uh, hind limb. Already I discussed it at the time of skeletal system. You know, femur, thigh bone, tibia, tarsals, ankle bones, tarsomeres are the parts of the par last part of leg. Like that, some sort of resemblance will be there with reference to the terminology. But anyhow, it is better to remember if nobody or if some of you are not able to remember these words, okay, no problem, no issue. But 1, 2, 3, 4 and this everything comes under 5. Total 5 parts are present in the leg. Like that remaining legs are also present. See the last one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here there is a chitinous pad or spongy pad will be there. There is a spongy pad. You can see one spongy pad here, here. This is the spongy pad. Okay. So, on either side of uh, the spongy pad, uh, which color I have to take this one. Here you can see a pair of claws like this. So, here the pair of claws are present and this is a softy pad, okay, spongy pad, chitinous pad, you can call it as an aroleum, A-R-O-L-I-U-M, aroleum, which is also called, there is another name for this aroleum, aroleum is also called pulvilus, P-U-L-V-I-L-L-U-S, aroleum or pulvilus is a pad, chitinous pad which is present here covered by on either side of which a pair of claws. So, this is one claw, this is another claw. And the aroleum is useful to provide grip to the cockroach while it is moving on rough surface. See, when you are moving on rough surface, you will, uh, you will walk in a different way. Whenever you are trying to walk on smooth surfaces, generally you will be very cautious when we are walking on smooth surface. So, who is going to provide grip to the cockroach when it is moving on smooth surface? See, if you observe uh, at the joints, uh, there are some uh, pads will be there, soft pads will be there. Here the pads will be there. These are called plantulae, P-L-A-N-T-U-L-A-E, plantulae useful to provide grip to the cockroach while it is moving on soft surfaces or smooth surfaces. And who is going to provide grip to the cockroach when it is moving on rough surface means aroleum which is also called pulvilus, P-U-L-V-I-L-L-E-S. So, trochanter this is a triangular part and femur and tibia contains chitinous bristles also like that. Okay. So, that is about one leg like that, the remaining legs are present that is the reason why it is called hexapoda, six legs 
one pair of legs attached to each part of thorax. Let us move to the next portion, hope so it is clear. You can take one screenshot now. And now, let me show you the wings of the cockroach. You know how many, how many, how many wings are present? Two pairs of wings are present. How many wings are present in the cockroach? Two pairs of wings are present. And the first pair of wings, eh? first pair of wings are attached to mesothorax, second part of the thorax. And a second pair of wings, eh? they are attached to metathorax. First pair of wings are attached to meso, second pair attached to metathorax. Let me show you, let me show you. Say this, mm, yeah, I can take this diagram. Say this, hope so it is visible. Yeah, it is better to be here. Say this. Okay, so four wings. First pair, this is prothorax and this is mesothorax and this is metathorax. Second part of thorax, this is mesothorax and this one is the third part of thorax, metathorax. So, second part of thorax, to the second part of thorax actually first pair of wings are attached and those first pair of wings are called mesothoracic wings. Why? Because they are attached to mesothorax. So, these are also called mesothoracic wings, mesothoracic wings. These are also called four wings, F-O-R-E, four means anterior, something like four limbs. So, four wings, these are also called tegmina, see here, T-E-G-I, tegmina, G-M-I-N-A, tegmina, four wings are also called tegmina and these are second pair of wings, second pair of wings are called metathoraxic wings, why? Because they are attached to metathorax. So, these are also called metathoracic wings are also called hind wings. Okay. First pair of wings are mesothoracic wings, second pair metathoracic wings. First pair four wings, uh, these are thick, opaque, OPA, QUE, leathery, thick, opaque, leathery. Hind wings are thin, membranous and delicate. These are very delicate, thin wings, membranous wings, uh, delicate wings are hind wings, these are in fact the true wings, these are the true wings which are useful for flight, these are essential for flight. I will show you, I will show you, say this one, this one, say this wings, these are the two wings, say this, hope so it is visible. So, these wings are called four wings, these are four wings, these are four wings. These are darker and if you observe the second pair, see the second pair of wings, these are very delicate. These are very delicate, very thin wings are present. So, these are the second pair of wings. Now, I caught the second pair of wings. See the four wings? Exactly the cockroach will be like this at the time of flying, at the time of flying. So, at the time of flying, cockroach will put uh, it four wings at right angles to the body like this. Okay? Let me show you. Imagine this is the fore wing and this is the hind wing. At the time of flying, the fore wing will be kept at right angles to the body, hind wing shows upward and downward movement. The flickering movement will be exhibited by the hind wing. So, fore wings, uh, imagine, imagine now my two hands are nothing but the fore wings. The fore wings will be kept at right angles to the body like this. Imagine this is the thoracic region. So, fore wings will be kept at right angles to the body, hind wing shows upward and downward movement, the flickering movements will be there. So, that is the reason why the cockroach is able to fly. Cockroach is able to fly to short distances because of having uh, these wings and of course, muscles also will be there, dorsal ventral muscles will be there. Imagine uh, this is the dorsal side, dorsal plate and this is the ventral plate, dorsal plate and ventral plate. So, here muscles will be there and these muscles are called dorsal ventral muscles, dorsal ventral and this plate is called tergal plate, this plate sternal plate. So, these muscles are also called tergosternal muscles, dorsoventral muscles. So, when the dorsoventral muscles contracts, contracts and relaxes, relaxes, then the wing will show upward and downward movement. So, upward and downward movement of wings will be possible because of contraction and relaxation of uh, these dorsoventral muscles. Dorsal side, tergal side is the dorsal side, sternal side is the ventral side and these muscles are called 
dorso ventral muscles okay rather than this rather than this point the point which is important in the neat uh, how many pairs of wings are present two pairs of wings are present first pair of wings are called mesothoracic wings first pair of wings are attached to mesothorax second pair of wings are attached to metathorax second pair of wings are also called hind wings what is the nature of the four wings they are thick opaque leathery and dark also very dark hind wings the nature of hind wings they are thin membranous delicate and these are the actual wings the true wings which helpful for flight because of these wings the cockroach is able to fly to short distance also and cockroach is cursorial cursorial means very fast runner isn't it c u r s o r i l cockroach is cursorial very fast runner very fastly it will uh, uh, fly to um, or, or where cursorial means very fast runner it can uh, run very fastly and of course it can fly to short distances also that's all about the wings uh, see this tegmina and these are the hind wings you can see fine tubes also have you seen this something like the veins of the leaf here also veins are present and in fact these are also called veins or nervures n e r v u r e s veins are nervures they are made with the I mean they are also sclerotinized tubes useful for uh, sending air also and so many important issues are also there but these are not important in uh, the neat point of view but if you observe uh, the wings in case of a male cockroach the wings of male cockroach extend beyond the tip of abdomen in case of uh, the males imagine this is the fore wing and this is the abdomen in case of male cockroach fore wings extend beyond the tip of abdomen in case of male cockroach in female cockroaches the fore wings are the wings won't extend beyond the tip of abdomen in case of female cockroach so in case of male cockroaches wings extend beyond the tip of abdomen in case of female cockroaches wings won't extend beyond the tip of abdomen and hind wings are actually very thin you have to remember that they are very short wings hind wings are very short that's all about these wings and now i am going to explain the abdomen of cockroach okay just give me one minute time i am going to explain you the abdomen of cockroach just keep on watching